military strike and can you assure the American people that by doing so, given Iraq and Afghanistan, that the United States will not get bogged down in yet another war halfway around the world? Well, first of all, I have not made a decision. Uh, I have gotten options from our military. I uh, had extensive discussions with my national security team. Uh, so let me talk about what's at stake here. Uh, I think we all understand terrible things have been happening uh, in Syria for quite some time. That uh, the Assad regime there uh, has been killing its own people by the tens of thousands. Uh, that uh, there are sectarian uh, arguments that have spilled over into bloodshed uh, and have escalated over the last couple of years. And uh, although what's happened there is tragic, and although I have called for Assad to leave and uh, make sure that we've got a transitional government that could be inclusive in Syria, uh, what I've also concluded is that uh, direct military engagement, involvement in a civil war in Syria uh, would not help the situation on the ground. Uh, and so we've been very restrained, uh, although diplomatically we've been very active. We've been providing a lot of humanitarian aid to people who've been displaced by the war. Uh, but what I also said was that uh, if the Assad regime used chemical weapons on his own people, that that would change some of our calculations. And the reason has to do with not only uh, international norms, but also America's core self-interest. We've got a situation in which uh, you've got a well-established international norm against the use of chemical weapons. Syria has one of the largest stockpiles in the world of chemical weapons. Uh, this is a volatile country in a very volatile region. We've got allies bordering Syria. Uh, Turkey is a NATO ally. Jordan, a close friend uh, that we work with a lot. Israel is very close by. We've got bases throughout the region. We cannot see a breach of the non-proliferation norm that allows potentially chemical weapons to fall into the hands of all kinds of folks. So what uh, I've said is that uh, uh, we have not yet made a decision, uh, but the international norm against the use of chemical weapons needs to be kept in place and uh, nobody disputes or hardly anybody disputes, that chemical weapons were used on a large scale in Syria against civilian populations. We have looked at all the evidence and we do not believe the opposition possessed nuclear weapons of that, or uh, chemical weapons of that sort. We do not believe that given the delivery systems using rockets that the opposition could have uh, carried out these attacks. We have concluded that uh, the Syrian government in fact carry these out and if that's so then there need to be international consequences so we are consulting with our allies we're consulting with the international community uh, and you know I have no interest in any kind of open-ended conflict in Syria but we do have to make sure that when uh, countries break international norms on weapons like chemical weapons that could threaten us that they are held accountable. But Mr. President, with all due respect, what does it accomplish? I mean, you're, the signals the American people are getting is that this would be a limited strike over limited duration. If it's not going to do that much harm to the Assad regime, what have you accomplished? How, well, what, what's, well, hap what's changed? The, uh, again, I have not made a decision, but I think it's important that uh, if in fact uh, we make a choice to uh, have repercussions for the use of chemical weapons, then the Assad regime, which is involved in a civil war, trying to protect itself, uh, will have received uh, a pretty strong signal that, in fact, it better not do it again. And that doesn't solve all the problems inside of Syria. Uh, and you know, it doesn't obviously end the death of innocent civilians inside of Syria. Uh, and we hope that, in fact, ultimately a political transition can take place uh, inside of Syria. And we're prepared to work with anybody uh, the Russians and others to try to bring the parties together to resolve the conflict. But we want the Assad regime to understand that by using chemical weapons on a large scale against your own people, against women, against infants, against children, that uh, you are not only breaking international norms and standards of decency, uh, but you're also creating a situation where uh, U.S. national interests uh, are affected. And uh, that needs to stop. Mr. President, with all of the 
mayhem in the Middle East involving allies like Israel and Jordan and refugees on the border mm -hmm. and potential action in Syria mm -hmm. and the collapse of the gov government in Egypt. Do you worry at all that your administration underestimated what the toll would be of an Arab Spring? Well, I don't. I, I think uh, we anticipated this would be uh, a really difficult process. I mean, you've got a region that for decades had basically been under autocratic rule and people had been suppressed and there were no traditions of uh, civil society. Uh, there were no uh, traditions of political freedom. And then suddenly uh, folks are uh, allowed to express themselves but a lot of their organizing principles end up being around extremist agendas in some cases. Um, more moderate forces sometimes haven't yet got their act together. Uh, so we anticipated that this was going to be uh, a very difficult path. Uh, we're not surprised by it. I, the, the one thing, though, maybe implicit in your question, uh, Gwen, is, is some suggestion that uh, there was something we could do to, that pre wasn't to prevent it. My question. And, and I think uh, if the idea is that what we should have done is done more to shore up autocratic governments, that uh, we should have stood by while governments that uh, we had relationships with killed their own people, uh, peaceful, innocent protesters, uh, then I suspect you'd have a different set of questions for me. Uh, and so we don't have uh, good options, great options for the region. But what I am uh, clear about is that uh, if the United States stands by its core values and its core interests, if we're very clear about uh, making sure that we're stopping terrorist attacks against the United States. If we are uh, very clear about uh, our uh, you know, commitment to the safety and security of Israel, uh, if we are clear about uh, uh, the fl uh, free flow of energy uh, throughout the region uh, that affects the entire global economy, but also if we're clear about our values and that we believe in inclusive governments, that we believe in the protection of minority rights, that we believe in women's rights, that we believe that over time it's better for governments to be representative of the will of their people as opposed to uh, being uh, you know, dictated to by authoritarian governments. If we are consistent in those principles, then eventually I think uh, we will be better off. But I, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have some very difficult problems in the, in the meantime. I do have one more brief question about sure. Syria. To the American people who look at this and say, why are we getting involved? How do you justify taking action? I know you talked about international norms because of chemical weapon use, but not because of the 100,000 people who were killed there in the past and the 2 million refugees who fled across the border. Well, what's happened has been heartbreaking, but uh, when you start talking about chemical weapons uh, in a country that has the largest stockpile of chemical weapons in the world, uh, where over time their control over chemical weapons may erode, where they're allied to uh, known terrorist organizations that in the past have targeted the United States, uh, then there is a prospect, a possibility, in which chemical weapons uh, that can have devastating effects uh, could be directed at us. And uh, it, we want to make sure that that does not happen. Uh, there's a reason why there's an international norm against chemical weapons. Uh, there's a reason why consistently uh, you know, the rules of war have suggested the use of chemical weapons violates uh, Geneva protocols. So um, they're different. And we want to make sure that they are not loose in a way that ultimately could affect our, uh, our security. And if, in fact, uh, we can take limited, tailored approaches, not getting drawn into a, a, a long conflict, uh, not a repetition of uh, you know, Iraq, which I know a lot of people are worried about. Uh, but if we are saying uh, in a clear uh, and decisive but uh, very limited way, we send a shot across the bow saying, stop doing this, uh, that can have a positive impact on our national security over the long term and may have a, a, a positive impact in the sense that chemical weapons are not used again.